Hey everybody, we're going to talk about zombies today. I thought we'd film in my backyard since it's the end of summer and I just wanted to enjoy the South Carolina weather um, at the end of summer before the school year starts. Um, from The Walking Dead to Carrie Ryan's young adult series The Forest of Hands and Teeth and the other young adult book Warm Bodies, and also a great movie too, um, to World War Z, our culture is obsessed with zombies. There's a lot of really great zombie books and movies and graphic novels out there. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about where I see the history of zombies. Um, a lot of us don't think of Frankenstein as a zombie book, um, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, um, but I think that the book is kind of an early precursor to the zombie genre, um, particularly because I think that one of our interests in zombies is what happens to someone after they die, and if that person would come back, what would they be like? So even though the monster in Frankenstein is kind of a lot of different body parts and brains and that kind of thing, um, there is that idea of when you bring a physical body back to life, you can't control it. And so are they going to be destructive? Are they going to be cannibalistic? And I think this question of when we bring the physical body back after death, um, I think that this is at the heart of a lot of our, um, our love for zombies. And I think that Mary Shelley definitely had this question of, what happens after death and what if we bring the dead back to life and a lot of people when they think of Frankenstein they think of it as as starting from as Mary Shelley described um, a writing contest between her and Byron and Percy Shelley where they're up late at night and there's the storm um, and they all have a contest as who can write the scariest novel and that's where she got the idea of Frankenstein um, she also referenced a dream she had of um, of a man bending over um, the body of this creature and that, that gave birth to the story. But I think it was much more a part of her psychological search um, that birthed Frankenstein. Um, Mary Shelley had several um, stillborn um, children. Um, she had some miscarriages and other scholars have pointed this out as well to a journal entry that she wrote um, soon after the death of one of her infants. Um, this was actually written in her journal in 1815 dreamt that my baby came to life again, that it had only been cold, and that we rubbed it before the fire and it lives. Whoa, I get chills every time I read that. So obviously Mary Shelley wrote the novel partly out of her own grief and partly out of thinking what if um, someone I love died or anyone came back to life. Um, and as we know from Frankenstein, um, the monster, once he's brought back, he can't be controlled. And um, he has various feelings of love, hate, passions, being abandoned by his own creator. And these all come out of the novel of a physical body that comes back to life that cannot be controlled. So apart from the fact that I think that Mary Shelley's Frankenstein really paved the way for the zombie books and movies that we have now, um, and I think that the zombie has obviously evolved, whereas the monster in Frankenstein would quote, quote Paradise Lost and has had very um, complicated language and rhetoric. Um, now obviously zombies don't talk like that usually in most novels. Um, and I think that the other great thing about zombie novels and movies is the idea of the zombie apocalypse. I think that the apocalypse explores a lot what does it mean to be human. Um, one of my favorite authors, Toni Morrison, said that um, she loves to put her characters at the edge of a cliff and see how they respond. And I think that the zombie apocalypse is a great way to do this. When you have half or three-fourths or 90% of the human population dead and walking around trying to infect others and kill and eat them, how are the remaining survivors going to um, live? Are they going to continue to live ethically or is this going to rock their world so they become just as monstrous as the zombies? Um, one of my very favorite um, zombie shows now, the popular Walking Dead, where's this? Um, as the series progresses, um, the characters are really um, exploring, um, well, the monsters become, the bigger threat becomes the other surviving groups of humans um, who seem to have lost all of their humanity during the zombie apocalypse. So this is one of my other favorite elements of the zombie novel. It can really um, not just sort of explore the supernatural apocalyptic world, but it can get to the core of what makes us human. And when we are on that edge of the cliff, how are we going to respond? One other thing that I mentioned The Walking Dead several times here because I just absolutely think it's brilliant. Um, and one of my other favorite things that I think that the series explores is as the series progresses, you have children who are being raised in this apocalyptic world and how are they going to morally develop? And that's a question I think with the character Carl and some other characters in there. I don't want to give away any plot spoilers, um, but some of the choices they make, you wonder can a human being be raised in such a world and be able to develop morally or ethically? And I think that that's another thing that some of the really well-developed, de really solid um, zombie novels and series and television series and um, books explore.
So I really enjoyed talking with you today about zombies. Um, please follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.